All right, so we're saying that electronegativity, this is just how strong an atom can pull electrons towards itself. Okay, so I put up a trend here to show you in general how strong the atoms are. Okay, so this just says carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, just to show you the general trend on the periodic table. As you go to the right and as you go up, this is increasing in electronegativity, okay? So fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen, it's more electronegative than nitrogen, it's more electronegative than carbon, okay? So same thing down here, fluorine is more electronegative, chlorine is more electronegative than bromine, is more electronegative than iodine. That's the general trend, okay? Uh, and just so you know, you guys, electronegativity, it ranges from zero to four. All right, what this means is, is like if you go to the gym and you ask somebody, hey, how much can you bench? Then they'll tell you, hey, I can bench 150 pounds or I can bench 200 pounds. This is the same thing for atoms and their electronegativity, but they don't say, hey, I can bench 100 pounds. They say, I can bench or my electronegativity is four or it's 3.5 or it's two. Okay, so this is just how much they can pull electrons towards themselves. Let me give you an example here. Okay, so carbon and oxygen. Oxygen's electronegativity is around 3.5. Carbon's electronegativity, based on our trend, do you expect it to be greater than or less than 3.5? Well, since oxygen is more to the right, then we think that oxygen is gonna have a higher electronegativity. It's gonna be able to pull electrons closer to itself than carbon. And so if you actually check the electronegativity for carbon, you'll see that it's around 2.5. And you guys don't need to memorize these numbers at all, you guys. All you guys need to be able to do is be able to take a look at the periodic table and know that the trend is that as you go to the right and as you go up, that's increasing in electronegativity, okay? So as you can see here, for a polar covalent bond, oxygen has a higher electronegativity than carbon. So that's why we saw that oxygen had the electrons closer to itself than carbon did because oxygen's able to pull those electrons with its higher electronegativity, okay? All right, so now that you understand the concept of electronegativity, I can give you some guidelines for how to know for sure whether you have a nonpolar covalent bond, a polar covalent bond, or an ionic bond. Because the only difference between these different types of bonds is the difference in electronegativity between the atoms connected. Okay, so let me go ahead and put up the ranges for the different types of bonds, and then we can talk about what they mean. Okay, so the range for a nonpolar covalent bond is an electronegativity difference that's less than 0.5 between the two atoms. The range for a polar covalent bond is going to be a range between 0.5 to 1.9 between the two atoms. And for an ionic bond, the range is greater than 1.9. Okay, so what does this mean, you guys? These ranges are talking about the electronegativity difference between the two atoms that are connected. Okay, so take carbon and oxygen, for example. The electronegativity for oxygen was 3.5, the electronegativity for carbon was 2.5. The difference between these two is 3.5 minus 2.5 equals one, right? So one falls between this range, between 0.5 to 1.9. That's how we know that this is a polar covalent bond. Okay, if I gave you the electronegativity for carbon and hydrogen, you'd see that carbon is 2.5 and hydrogen is 2.1. So what's the difference in electronegativity between these two atoms? 0.4, right? And does that fall within the range of a nonpolar covalent bond? Yeah, right, you guys, anything less than 0.5 is nonpolar covalent, okay? And if you check Na and Cl, let's see what their electronegativities are. Okay, so sodium is around 0.9 and chlorine is 3.0. So the electronegativity difference for those two is three minus 0.9, which would be 2.1, which is greater than 1.9. So that's how we know that this is an ionic bond. Okay, so you don't have to memorize these electronegativities, you guys. If your instructor wants to ask you to tell whether a bond is nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic, he's gonna have to give you these electronegativity numbers so that you can do this calculation, okay? Otherwise, you can get by with just knowing the trend, that as you go to the right and up, that's increasing in electronegativity, okay? So fluorine in the periodic table is gonna be the most electronegative atom of the periodic table, okay? All right, so just to make this tug-of-war analogy complete,
Whenever you think of these three different types of bonds, you can just think of a nonpolar covalent bond being two guys of the same size, same strength, pulling on that rope, pulling on those electrons, and it's not going anywhere because they're pretty much the same strength, right? A polar covalent is gonna be a little bit bigger guy pulling against a little bit of a smaller guy. So the bigger guy is gonna be able to pull those electrons closer to himself because he's stronger. His electronegativity is greater. And for an ionic bond, this is like a humongous guy versus a tiny guy. And it's obvious that this huge guy is just gonna yank the rope out of this tiny guy's hands, right? So this is how to imagine these three different types of bonds, just different strength people in a tug of war contest for these electrons, all right? Okay, so the last thing I wanna mention here is why we call these polar and nonpolar bonds. Okay, so we call this a polar bond because when you stick oxygen and carbon together, this is gonna to create two poles, two ends, a partially positive end and a partially negative end. Why is this the case? Well, check it out, you guys. So oxygen, we said that it has a higher electronegativity than carbon, meaning it's gonna be pulling electrons closer to itself and further away from carbon. So the question to ask yourself is, do electrons have a charge to them? And yeah, you guys, electrons are negatively charged. So oxygen is pulling these negatively charged electrons to itself. So do you think it's gonna become more positive, more negative, or stay the same? Well, if oxygen's pulling negatively charged things towards itself, it's gonna become partially negative. And the way we represent this is with something called a delta minus. Okay, so a delta, this is just like the Greek letter for D. So RD looks like this. A Greek D is just kind of fancy, looks like that. So this delta minus stands for this oxygen having a partially negative charge. Okay, so it's not a full negative charge like we saw in chlorine because this oxygen isn't completely taking those electrons away from carbon. They're still sharing those electrons in a covalent bond, but oxygen is pulling those electrons closer to itself, making oxygen partially negative. And hey, you guys, if oxygen is becoming partially negative because it's pulling those electrons towards itself, what do you think is happening to carbon? Well, since those electrons are being pulled away from carbon, you're pulling negative things away from carbon, which makes carbon less negative. And another way of saying less negative is that carbon is becoming more positive, right, you guys? So you can represent this with a delta positive sign. And this now shows you why we call this a polar covalent bond, because we have two poles to this thing, a partially positive pole, a partially positive end, and a partially negative end. And it's because oxygen is pulling these electrons closer to itself. And the other way to represent this is with something called a dipole arrow. Okay, so this is an arrow that points in the direction of the atom that's pulling the electrons. So since oxygen is pulling these electrons towards itself, the arrow is gonna point that way. It makes sense, right? And the other part to a dipole arrow is just to add this little cross hatch right there. And this is basically like a little positive sign saying that, hey, this carbon right here has a positive charge and the electrons are being pulled towards that oxygen, making oxygen partially negative and this carbon partially positive. And this is why we call this a polar covalent bond. This is also the reason why we call this a nonpolar covalent bond, because neither one of these is significantly different in electronegativity. So neither one of these is gonna be pulling electrons in either direction. The electrons are pretty much gonna be right in the center. So that's why this is called nonpolar, because two poles aren't created, but this is called polar because Two ends are created, two poles are created, a partially positive pole and a partially negative pole because electrons are being pulled towards oxygen. And awesome, you guys, that's gonna finish up our general chemistry review, great job. If you guys understand everything from today's session, then you guys are gonna go into OCHEM with a solid foundation. All we have to do now is just build step by step on top of it, okay? So just review the concepts that we talked about today, make sure it all makes sense to you, and then we'll be ready to start our OCHEM.